It's Simon van Gent on Assembly Radio with Be My Echo, a song of his new record, Suffer Well. And Simon van Gent is a songwriter from Cape Town, South Africa. And between February 2014 and February 2015, he challenged himself to write a song every week for a year. Each week, he posted a brand new song to his blog until all 52 were released into the World Wide Web. On completion of this mammoth task, he connected with Johannesburg-based artist Sanette Stegman, who took on her own challenge to make an ink drawing for each of these songs. Each illustration is inspired by the stories and the mood they invoke and include a line of the lyrics. At the same time, Simon and his introspective indie folk rock band, called Simon and the Band Apart, has teamed up with producer Chris Tuck to record the best of the blog songs for a new album. And this will all come together at a joint exhibition opening and album launch on the 3rd of September at the Young Blood Gallery in Bree Street, Cape Town, as part of the First Thursday Initiative. Each illustration will be box-framed with the CD of that song, and the event will feature a live performance by the band of the song's on the new album and we are very privileged today to have simon live in the studio how are you doing today simon yeah i'm good thanks thanks for joining us it's my pleasure all right well let's talk about this new album obviously it's been a long time coming you've been working really hard at it let's go back to the beginning the genesis of the project and talk about how you came up with the idea okay well, um, I actually gave a talk on this the other day. Um, I don't know if you know these Petra Kutcher talks. In fact, they have them here at the assembly um, usually, but this one was in the city hall. And so if I end up sounding like I'm giving a Petra Kutcher talk, it's because I memorized this stuff That's awesome. <laughs> last week. So it started with um, something that, I don't know if you know the podcast, This American Life. Well, it's a radio show in the States. And Ira Glass is the guy who presents it. And I heard an interview with him and he was talking about becoming a writer and what makes people become writers and, and what they go through and basically he talks about this thing he calls the gap and he says that when um, people set out to become artists the thing that inspires them is that they have good taste so they know what great art is and they love it and they want to be able to do it they want to be able to emulate that great art and so they set out on their journey and, and start creating and the first thing they realize because they know what great art is, and they can tell the difference between good art and bad art, it immediately becomes apparent to them that there's this huge gap between the art that they're creating and the art they're aspiring to create. And basically they realize that they suck. And because that's such an unpleasant feeling, what, what happens to a lot of people is they give up right at the beginning of their journey, thinking that the ability to make that great art is some God-given talent that they just don't have. But what Ira Glass explains in this interview is that the only way you can close that gap is by putting in the hours and doing the work. So I basically wanted to put that to the test um, and see what would happen if I found a way to make myself work really hard at my songwriting. But I knew that it was going to be hard to discipline myself and I needed some clever trick to force myself to work hard. And that's where I came up with this concept of a song a week. And the trick is to go public the minute you tell everybody you're going to do something and go onto, onto uh, Facebook and tell all your friends, then if you don't follow through with it, you're going to end up looking really bad. And that was the whole idea of setting up the blog, announcing it on Facebook, and then I basically couldn't back out of it. And it forced me to to carry through with the, with the process, even though it was incredibly stressful. And when I was in the middle of it, I wished I hadn't done it. There was no way I could not do it because I would have looked stupid. So... That was how what got me into it and how I managed to do it. So you had to get a pro SoundCloud account to enable you to upload exactly, all those hours yes. of audio. That's what, I, that's what I realized about halfway through when I started running out of space. All right, so you essentially wrote a song a week and uploaded it onto SoundCloud for an entire year. Yeah. So what was it like in the first month or so? Did it flow quite easily? When did it start to get difficult for you? No, it was difficult from the beginning. It never, it never got harder or, or more difficult in a general way. There were weeks where it was harder and there were some weeks where I would just write the song without even really trying. It's like that, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll really have to work hard for that song and it won't end up being such a great song even. And sometimes you'll, it'll just happen. It'll kind of fall out of you and you'll think, oh, that must be a rubbish song because it is much too easy to write. And then you play it to people and you realize, actually, no, that was a good one. So, one of the great things about the whole process was that you end up with a lot of songs. So, you know, you you can't really control 
when a song is going to be a good song. All you can do is write the song and find out later if it's going, if you know, if it was a good one or not. And writing a lot of songs means there's more likely to be good ones. So, for example, I, I heard this interview once with with Beck on another podcast I'd love to listen to called All Songs Considered. I don't know if you guys know that podcast. It's a, an NPR show. And Bob Boylan, who's the host, said to Beck, you know, I don't believe you've ever written a bad song. And Beck said, no, I've, I've written plenty of bad songs. It's just, just no one ever hears them. But that to write the good ones, you've got to write the bad ones. And that's really what I discovered, you know. You mass produce in this way, you're going to end up with lots of good ones. And also, you know, if you go into, into a studio with to record an album and say you've got 15 to 20 songs, which is kind of what I would have done in the past, it means you're going to end up putting songs on the album that maybe you're not entirely sure should go on. But in this case, because I had 52 to choose from, it meant I didn't have to compromise at all on that on the quality of which songs ended up on the album. Um, I mean, I really feel like every single song is like a strong song, you know. And yeah, I mean, basically, I've got to do this for every album that I ever make from now on because there's no going back, you know. I've seen how well this works. Yeah. And so essentially, you are living proof of that concept that creating a body of work really does pay off in the sense of being a creative and trying to get that good quality songs out yeah. there. You have to keep producing a whole massive body of work. That's the only way that you get to the end goal. I guess, yeah. You know, and also, you know, writing a lot of songs gives you leeway to mess around with crazy ideas because if one idea doesn't work, it doesn't matter because there are going to be so many other songs that to choose from in the end. So I started just taking a chance and writing songs about things I, I've never written about. You know, I mean, I wrote songs about climate change and I, you know, yeah. I, I've got a song there called Suffer Well, which became the title track, which when I wrote, I thought this is a hell of a heavy thing to write a song about. Should I really be going so deep into this thing? Yeah. But I thought, no, what the hell? You know, there's, there's so many songs that I got, I've got to play with. I can just write the thing and, and, and take a chance on it, you know? And very often the ones I did take a chance on ended up being the better ones, which was quite interesting. It must have been a very interesting experience, though, looking at 52 songs that you've written and then deciding which are the ones that you want to choose for the album because with so many songs, and an album normally being, what, 10 to 15 songs, that's a massive reduction of, of the song. So... Let's talk about that process of actually choosing the ones that appear Well, that's, that's very easy to answer. All we did was we got um, all our friends and You put them all fans. in a hat. Yeah, we, no, 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 no. <laughs> we, 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 we got all, like, you know, there's a bunch of people we know that love the music um, that we could trust with their opinions, some fans, some friends. Um, and there was probably, I don't know, about 10 or so people that we got to make lists of which songs they'd like to hear on an album. And all I did was I, I got them to make A lists and B lists. And then anything that was on an A list got two points. Anything that was on a B list got one point. And then I just added up the points and made a new list based on those lists. Um, wow. And that's how we worked out which were going to be on the album. But there was still a little bit of leeway. I mean, there was one song which didn't make that list, which my drummer Ross insisted be on because it's his favorite you know, sure. things like that. So so you actually relied essentially on your friends or your fans, if you will. Well, I generally do, you know. it's uh, I've got such a um, hectic internal critic that it's very hard for me to actually appreciate my own music until someone else tells me, okay, that's a good song because that critic in me has destroyed that song for me in that way. Like, oh, it's hard to explain. I kind of yeah. tend to run, run my own work down sure. so hard. Um, and it's really something I need to do something about because it's it's a big obstacle to yeah. the creative process. But um, in fact, that's that's really why it was necessary for me to do something like a song a week because it forced me to finish the songs despite what that into you know the, mm -hmm. the thing Ira Glass said that feeling of I suck. Well, I mean that's essentially what writer's block is. I think in my case, at any rate, it's like you start writing a song and then there's this voice in your head saying this song sucks, <laughs> you suck, you're an imposter. You're not a real artist. Who are you kidding? And that voice, for whatever reason, I don't know where it comes from, probably some rubbish from my past, you know. But having a weekly deadline meant I couldn't let that voice stop me because... Didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice, yeah. So I had to, And so 
it, it became very clear to me that writer's block is really just the fear of making bad art, you know. So you just carry on writing no matter what. And, and that's the trick for me is to just keep doing the job, you know. It's like I know how to do it. I can do it. And it's, it doesn't require that I be feeling fantastic about the song, although that helps. And that's definitely a fuel that keeps you going. But you can also keep going just by keeping going. Mm. And that really worked, you know. And did you find that as you did keep going – that that voice got softer over time, that critical voice, or did you find it was always kind of there? No, it was always there. I mean, that voice is to do with unconscious stuff that's not going to change just because you keep beating it. Um, if you're going to fix that, you need to go to therapy or something. You know, it's like, um, that's mm -hmm. what I think. Very familiar with that voice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think songwriters or artists are familiar with that voice. I mean, I know from my own perspective, when I've tried to write songs, I always feel... Uh, oh, and this isn't. This is not a great song. This is. This is. This is really what I could be. You know. There's so many different things you can think. Oh, this sounds like something else. This, these yeah. lyrics are weak. The melody is average. Yeah, but um, you're learning something. You, you know, no matter how good the song ends up being, by sitting there and plowing through the process of yeah. finishing the song, trying your best every time, you're learning something. So even it might be a, a song that's not so good. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're on that journey up the mountain to where you know where the great songs are. Exactly. Yeah. I mean that that was the whole idea behind the body of work is that yeah. you're only going to write your best songs if you produce a big body of work. Because how else are you going to know yeah. how you're going to be able to dif differentiate? And it? also, you're learning new things along the way. Every song I wrote, I learned something. I learned a new turn of phrase, or I learned a new way to sing over that chord progression. You know. You, or a new way to find an idea, you know. I mean, I, I discovered a, a great trick for finding song ideas when I really had no ideas. In fact, the songs suffer well. I found, and I'm a, I almost think I shouldn't say this because it's supposed to be some mystical thing where you find ideas for songs, but I was, I had this guitar part that I really liked and I thought, okay, I've got to write a song this week and I had no idea. So I went on to, um, I just started, you know, this thing called Stumble Upon where you just, it just throws random websites at you and it landed me on this quotations website. And there was a quotation by Muhammad Ali and he said that he hated every minute of his training, but, he, you know, he just didn't enjoy being in the gym. He hated it. But he knew that if he wanted to be a champion, he had to suffer that. So this was a quotation about suffering. And I thought, hang on, that's great. What other quotations are there going to be on this website about suffering? So I just typed suffering in the search bar and it threw up all these amazing quotations by Dostoevsky and Keats and Nietzsche and, you know, so I just basically collected the quotes I liked and started writing a song based on those quotes and some of my own ideas. But there's a great way to find song ideas. Go to a quotes website and start reading quotes until you find somebody who said something that resonates with you mm. and would make a good song you know yeah. that's there, there's one idea that's yeah. one that's one trick i learned you know and the, i learned that by doing the song a week i wouldn't have learned it any other way but you know there's lots of tricks yeah i actually remember chatting to you at uh where would we be house of machines a couple months back and you were giving me some tips on songwriting and i just remember saying well you saying that you have to come up with an idea and then you can brainstorm you know different yeah, ideas yeah well that, that are there's, related two, there's to that. two there's two ways i've got of writing songs and that that i also kind of discovered in the process was the first is where you start with an idea so you look for an idea like that like suffer well you hunt for an idea and and, and you just stay on the lookout everywhere you go things people say you know often you'll hear a song and and you'll go wow that's something I think all the time, but I never thought of writing a song about it, you know. So these things are always passing through our minds, but we never catch them. So you, you're always on the lookout for ideas. And then when you find an idea, then there's that method that I explained where it was actually something I learned on a songwriting course that I did online last year um, through Berkeley in Boston, I think they are. Um, you know, there are these free online courses you can do. Um, the website was Coursera. C O U R S E R A, Coursera. And there you can find hundreds of these online courses about anything from universities all over the world. But anyway, so this was a songwriting course, and the method they describe is you start with an idea and you start brainstorming keywords around that idea. So if, if you know, if say your song was Suffer, Suffer Well, you could say Pain, you could say Heartache, you, you know, you could just brainstorm ideas. And then you write down these keywords and you make sure that your 10 keywords don't rhyme with each other. That's very important because what you're going to do next 
is go to your rhyming dictionary and just find as many words as you can that rhyme with each keyword. So you start with your first keyword and you just start finding rhymes. You look, you look that keyword up in your dictionary. So if pain was a keyword. Yeah, then you would see rain and you'd think, hmm, could rain be in the song? Yeah, well, rain is a, is a great metaphor for sadness. I'll stick that on my list. Um, gain, okay, obviously no pain, no gain. That's a word that might appear. And the great thing about that process is that um, each time you see a new word on that list in the rhyming dictionary and you're thinking, could that be in a song? That word will often get you thinking in a way that you wouldn't be thinking about an idea for that song because it might be a word which you'd never have dreamed of putting in the song, but suddenly there it is and it's suggesting a, a line about um, stain, you know, about the stain you left on my heart, for example, or, you know. Yeah. So, so each word sparks an idea and it's an idea generator, that method. So you end up with this, this sheet of... 10 keywords or, you know, however, however many more or less 10 keywords and as many rhymes as you can for each keyword. And then you, that, that's what you use to build your verses. You've just got all these words. You can start uh. chucking in verses. You can use them as end, end of line rhymes or internal rhymes. You know, you, they're all there. So that's the one method. And I used that. I actually wrote a song and I saw it all the way through. So just so that you know, um, I've been oh, take, taking your advice. Brilliant. <laughs> So that's the one the you know, that's the one way of writing a song. You start with an idea and you build a song up around the idea. And the other way is to to just have no idea. And you you're playing your guitar, you've got a feeling, and then you just start writing whatever the hell comes out of your head. And trust that your subconscious can create something. You know, every night you go to sleep and you dream, and your mind effortlessly creates these incredible things. I literally am, am, you know, I'm about to lose my skull from nodding so much in agreement yeah. because, no, 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 I mean, uh, look, I, I can vouch, first of all, about the, you know, the whole, just from nothing, you know, getting a song. I mean, I'll sometimes sit with my guitar for a few hours without even noticing, you know what I mean, because the time just flies by. Yeah, every yeah, now. Yeah. And, then, and then all of a sudden, you know, you start playing something, you get an idea in your head and you start talking and then it just, it just works out. It, and, it, and it just exactly it, it, to me know, those just, are the best songs because they're the most honest in a way you know it's like um you can construct a song in a in using your left brain yeah but to me that's not the interesting part of the brain the it, interesting it, part of the brain is the right is is the, the part yeah. of your brain that creates dreams at nights and those are the songs that i love the most you know i'd rather hear a bob dylan song like tambourine man or whatever where the lyrics are just yeah. crazy and they don't have any logical sense than than a well-structured country and western song that tells a specific story although i love them both which yeah. is why which is why i try and write both kinds of songs but always my favorite the one that sets me free when i hear it is the bob dylan kind where there's this crazy dreamy story that isn't really a story that's just a, a bunch of wild images you where, know? where where everything that's said in the song is almost just another message you know and it's all emotion yeah, it's all it's, exactly. it's not like it's, it's calculated unco it's unconscious stuff yeah yeah it's, it's stuff that makes you feel and allows you to dream your own dream on top of it and allows you to think your own meaning you know it's, it's not it's not prescribing a, a, a story that you it's almost like the difference between constructing a song and like expressing a song yeah, you know what i mean yeah, it's it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's two different things you know yeah. it's two different skills really i mean yeah. they're, they're both they're both admirable i mean if yeah. you can build up a, a great song just from calculations yeah and, and and that's not black and white i mean the the one method always involves some of the other method oh, yeah. you know so that's that's the great thing about being able to do both is you can actually use both in the same song synergy yeah yeah you know often i'll be i'll be just doing the, the method of writing with, without thinking, you know, an unpremeditated method of just letting stuff come out of my brain. And then suddenly I'll go, wow, hang on, that's a good idea. That song you just played, Be My Echo, was one of those. I just started writing. And then I just, for whatever reason, I just started singing Be My Echo. I didn't have any idea why that came out of my head. And suddenly that became a great focus for the song, you know. That's incredible. Mm, very, good. very interesting. <laughs> well, why don't we take a listen to one of your songs, Simon? Okay. You've got a beautiful Larabay guitar here today. I'm a big Larabay fan, made in Canada by John Larabay and the family. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a live performance now from Simon van Gent playing a track off his new record, Suffer Well, uh, which I mentioned is being released this uh, coming Thursday. Um, no, not this Thursday. Thursday sorry. week. Thursday week, 3rd of September. Um, so we're going to have a live performance now from Simon. Uh, what is the name of this track? It's called Meerkat and Cobra, and this is actually the last song on the album. Push my 
myself along With my feet in the shallows of shadowy dreams I go into the kitchen to plot and to scheme Philosophy All that I ask for is a raft for these days on the ocean alone Apostrophes are all I have now for words like I love you and honey I'm home Absolution and blame If I call it name The exceptionally talented singer-songwriter Simon van Gent live with a track called Meerkat and Cobra from his latest record, Suffer Well, which comes out September 3rd. Cool. Well, a real privilege to have you in the studio today. Thanks very much for having me. Really awesome singer-songwriter. And uh, if people want to get hold of your other albums as well, they're all... uh, Yeah, they can all be found via the website. There's a link to iTunes and there's also, you know, if you go to the website, Bandcamp, bandcamp bandcamp.com. All the albums are up there. Otherwise, just email me and I can always make a plan to get a, an actual physical copy to whoever wants one. Awesome. 